These are your instructions. In general, you just need to follow the PowerPoint. There are instructions for you in the yellow boxes on each slide. Please make sure the sound is turned up on your device so you can hear the narration. And remember, if a slide asks for homework, don't forget to send it via Show My Homework. If a slide asks for Educate to be completed, don't forget to do it by the date that's given on the slide. These are our lesson objectives. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to describe what happens when a substance changes state, and you should be able to understand graphs of changes of state. This is our starter activity. Can you name five changes of state? There are five picture clues here. Stop the recording while you try and work them out. Hopefully you should have got all five changes of state, melting, boiling, condensing, freezing, and sublimation. Hopefully you should remember something about internal energy from our previous lessons. Internal energy is the energy stored inside a system by the particles of the system. That internal energy is made up of the kinetic energy because the particles are moving and the potential energy stored in chemical bonds and intermolecular forces. This is called a heating graph. It shows what happens when we heat a substance. If we start with a solid substance, and supply energy to it in the form of heat, the temperature will rise, as shown in this graph. At some point, the temperature stops rising. You carry on supplying heat, but the temperature doesn't rise for a while. When that happens, we say that the substance is melting. Now, it's important to remember that we're still putting energy in but the temperature isn't rising. So where is that energy going? Well, that energy is being used to break the intermolecular forces. And that's why the temperature isn't rising and it stays stable. Eventually, all of that material melts and you can read the melting point straight off your axis on the left hand side. If you carry on heating, the liquid will rise in temperature until at some point the same happens again. You get this leveling off effect where you're continuing to add heat, but the temperature isn't going up anymore. Now that is because the energy that you're putting in during this part of the graph is being used to break the intermolecular forces in the liquid. We call that point boiling. And again, you can read the boiling point straight off the graph. If you carry on adding energy, at some point you will turn the boiling liquid into a gas. Now, scientists call the energy required to change state latent heat. On the sloping parts of the graph, energy is being used to heat the substance and the temperature rises. On the flat parts of a heating graph, the energy that is being put in is being used to break the bonds of attraction between the particles so the temperature doesn't go up. Now you can also do this process in reverse, and we call that a cooling graph. So this time you start with a gas and you gradually remove some energy. And as you do so, the temperature starts to fall. Eventually, you get to a flat part of the graph where energy is continuing to be removed, but the temperature stops falling for a while. And that is because the gas is condensing into a liquid and that process gives out some energy. That energy maintains the temperature at that point for a little while. If you carry on removing energy, eventually the liquid will turn into a solid and we call that freezing. And again, there's a flat part of the graph here. What's happening is that there is that as bonds are being formed, energy is being given out and that energy maintains the temperature at that point for a little while. And then if you carry on removing energy, eventually you end up with a solid. If you follow the link below, you can see a lab experiment which can be used to produce a cooling graph. The final task for this lesson 
is to answer these five questions and submit your answers to Mr. Rahman via Show My Homework by Friday the 15th of May. Thank you.